Hi, I'm Tony Gondola, welcoming you to the next edition of Stories from Space. Enjoy! In early 1962, we knew how we would get to the moon. Once it was decided that a lightweight lander was the best way to get astronauts to the lunar surface, it was up to Grumman Aircraft to work out the details. The design team, led by Tom Kelly, came up with initial designs that looked more like a rocket-propelled helicopter, including seats for the crew and large curving windows for visibility. As the engineers thought more about the environment the LEM would actually be flying in, the design evolved with weight being the biggest issue. The end result was something that no one had seen before, a spacecraft that was 100% a creature of the environment it operated in. Angular and tissue paper thin in places, the LEM was perfectly designed for the job it had to do. Once the lunar module with its two astronauts aboard separated from the command module, the landing sequence could begin. On Apollo 10, 11, and 12, the LEM separated at an altitude of 60 miles and had to perform a descent orbit insertion burn to place itself into a 60 by 9 mile elliptical orbit with the low point 260 nautical miles uprange from the landing site. On later missions, the DOI burn was performed by the command module with the LEM still attached, saving fuel in the LEM for the actual landing. 50,000 feet above the surface, the landing phase would begin. The descent engine would fire, throttling up to 100% for the initial braking phase of the maneuver. This first phase of the descent, which lasts some eight and a half minutes, reduces the spacecraft velocity from over 5,000 miles per hour to roughly 350 miles per hour, bringing the lunar module down to just 7,500 feet above the surface. One extremely important event some six minutes into the burn is acquisition of the ground with a landing radar. Up to this point, the guidance computer's knowledge of altitude was an estimate. Once the landing radar kicked in, the guidance system now had the actual measured altitude above the surface for its computations. This would be incorporated gradually until everything was in agreement. This event was so important that mission rules stated that if the landing radar didn't work by a certain critical altitude, the astronauts had to abort. At an altitude of 7,500 feet, the approach phase of the landing would begin. The LEM pitches over, giving the crew their first good look at the landing site. At this point, the LEM is flying forward close to 300 miles an hour and dropping towards the surface at a rate of about 100 miles an hour. If you listen to the audio recordings at this point, you'll hear the LEM pilot calling out the altitude, current forward velocity, rate of descent, and LPD angle in degrees. This allows the person flying the LEM to keep his eyes out the window during this critical phase. As the surface approaches, the commander does have a certain degree of control. While the computer takes care of the engine thrust and keeping the machine stable, the commander can tell the computer in increments that he wants to shift the landing point left or right, forward or back. This is where the LPD angle comes in. On the commander's inner and outer window, there is a scale in degrees. If he lines up the two scales so that they superimpose and looks at the degree markings that match the LPD angle he's given, it will tell him where the computer is aiming to land. At approximately 500 feet, the final landing phase begins. The computer still controls the thrust, but the commander now is in full control of pitch, roll, yaw, and descent rate. Flying much like a helicopter at this point, the goal is to start coming straight down with just a little forward velocity, starting at about 100 feet. This was a good plan, as some of the landing sites were so dusty that the pilot simply couldn't see the surface below him and had to land primarily on instruments. Extending down from three of the landing pads are the five-foot-long landing probes. When one of these probes comes into contact with the lunar surface, a large blue light labeled lunar contact would illuminate on the instrument panel. This was the signal for the commander to shut down the engine and allow the LEM to fall the last five feet onto the surface. Falling the last few feet might not seem very desirable, but there was a very good reason for this. The engineers were concerned that if the engine bell got too close to the surface while still running, it might initiate overpressure instability that could cause the engine to explode. Once on the ground, there wasn't much time for celebration, as the crews would immediately start configuring the limb for liftoff. This first milestone was called T1, and it lasted four minutes after touchdown. During that time, both the crew and mission control would have to decide if it was safe to stay. 
After that, things got a lot more relaxed, with the next stay, no stay decision points some two hours later. The LEM was truly an amazing flying machine that did everything it was designed to do. It might have been the tissue paper spacecraft to some, but it got the job done, opening the first chapter of lunar exploration for all mankind. Well, that wraps up our latest edition of Stories from Space. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to check this location for future updates and information. And for now, stay home, stay safe, and stay curious.